Okay, today we're talking about how I got half a million impressions on my Instagram filter in less than two days. So in the past, I've created topical based filters and what I've struggled the most in is getting the mass, mass exposure for these filters. So whilst they might be topical and people will want to use them if they found it, the discovery on Instagram is very difficult and to try and push it out as well to the mass public is quite difficult unless you have channels. And that's what I've taken advantage of here. What I've done is I've effectively taken a post, I, I did a post back in Christmas 2019 where I had uh, posted a big bundle of different items I received and I tagged all the different brands, all the different people that are related to those into the post and saw who actually interacted with the post. And this is a bit experimental, but effectively what I've done is I've tried to find someone who interacts with small fans and will actually help grow that. So what I'm effectively looking for is an Instagram account that has a large amount of followers, but still interacts with their audience. And I'm gonna be honest, that is a very difficult, very niche set of people that do that. And so I think it's a bit of luck on one hand in finding someone who's interacting whilst they still have a large account. But that is that is the mindset I took into this. I found someone who has previously interacted with my posts that has a large enough audience that when I create a filter for them specifically, it's gonna allow for mass exposure to everyone else. Okay, so let's talk about the filter for a moment, just on itself. So the filter itself, I utilize Spark AR in order to uh, go through, create a filter, create a randomizer filter, and effectively publish that. So within that, there's a few different challenges. Firstly, you've got to get Spark AR itself. You need to get the assets for the filter as well. And then you need to create the randomizer. For myself, uh, already had Spark AR downloaded. If you don't have it, go to Spark, just Google Spark AR. I'm sure you'll get a link for it and you're able to just download it straight from the website. Asset wise, uh, I utilize Canva uh, a lot of the time because I find it's quite simple to use, has some great designs. So for me, I um, pulled a cover based, uh, a cover based template and modified it a bit. Um, included their uh, logo within the imagery itself. And then for the answers uh, on the filter itself, I then took a same uh, same template, as you can see between the two, same template, just different font and different color usage and different uh, imagery on it. So for each member, I try to personalize the, uh, the, the answer itself. There's challenges within Spark AR. My ideal is that I have like a photo of them or something like that that comes up above you. Unfortunately, Spark AR, from what I've found in the past, is uh, they heavily uh, discourage, and, and I'm pretty sure it's against their terms and policies, uh, to utilize imagery of a person's face within the filter. Um, I've definitely seen filters that do that, so I don't know how they get through, but the whole proviso is that you can't have images of people on it, so you have to use symbols and the likes to uh, sort of dictate who they are. So in my case, I've got like Chris's here with Giraffe Gang imagery in it. I've got Jez's, I've got Zach's, which I have to apologize, Zach, if you ever watched this video for using the old man stuff, but I that's what I used and I feel like it went off pretty well with that. Cash, you know, getting gains. Mopey, gotta use a small person. Uh, and Jidel chopped, I mean, chopped and creating your own shoes. I love it, man. Um, so that's it filter-wise. Um, if you go into then uh, Spark AR itself, um, we're then just bringing up, you know, like standard stuff. So you've got your actual assets, your, your question play and your answers, you got your patch. There's nothing super special about a randomizer in Spark AR. Um, so many people have done tutorials. If you just like YouTube, uh, randomizer filter within Spark AR, you're gonna find stuff. Um, other assets, sorry, I totally forgot other assets. Um, drum roll and um, DJ Airhorn. They're pretty standard stock sort of um, assets you can find online. 
I mean, if you Google them, you're going to find assets that are pretty similar. You can buy some. You could probably find ones online for free um, if you <laughs> dig deep enough. But it really is then mashing it all together into a single filter that represents their brand, that represents them to help and um, to help support them and provide another piece of content. The value for them um, saves them having to provide new content on that day. Um, but that quick insight on the actual Spark AR filter side of things. So when the filter first went live, uh, it was a Sunday night, I think, for me. I had no one use it. First 24 hours, no one used it. Second 24 hours, no one used it because I hadn't done anything with it. It had no impressions other than maybe me looking at it in my own camera roll, but really, no one was looking at the filter. No one had utilized it at all. And that's where I knew I needed to distribute it. So you can create a filter, anyone can create a filter, but to actually get the mass exposure, that is the difficult part. So what I did is I picked my timing. I utilized the previous account that I knew would interact with me. In this case, it was Christopher London. And I effectively looked or waited for him to post. And that, that made me know that oh, he's actively gonna be on Instagram at that stage. So I've got my accounts in mind and I it's effectively trawling through waiting for them to post so that they so that you know that they're actively online and more likely to see your messages or see your posts whatever you however you actually attack it in my case I created a story where I uh, utilized my randomizer filter made it so it popped up on his choice uh, so that you know it's more likely that he'll want to do it as well and tagged him as part of that Instagram story itself from there, it's then up to them whether they want to take that post or not. And that's the biggest challenge. If it's someone who's not going to interact with your post, they're less likely to actually take up and utilize that filter. Even though it's specifically made about them, it's still, it's still a challenge of will someone see it and will they want to take action afterwards. So you've got to make it really inviting for them and really give them a reason why they will want to utilize that. Now what I found is once one of them shared it, especially Christopher London being a big account, I think at the moment as of recording has about 700,000 followers on Instagram, once one person shares it, and especially a substantial authority in the group shares it, I found then the other members of the group are gonna share it, and if they've shared it, all their fans that look at their story or however they post it will also wanna share. So it's really, you get that big authority in the group to share first, and everyone else around them is gonna trickle along. So for me, it was like, I, I'm looking at his account, I see that he shared it, and then I'm looking at all the other members, and I'm like, when are they gonna share it? And then all of a sudden I pop through and I look at like their girlfriend's accounts, and they have shared it first before all the other members, and it's like, okay, well that's gonna give some traction then to, to get their partners to actually go through and utilize the filter, and it was quite, I don't know, it was quite an experience for me. I'm not usually one into numbers for social media, but this is one that, I was watching so closely because it's like, this is the first time this has ever sort of happened for me. So it was such a surreal moment for me when firstly he shared it, but then to see all the girlfriends share it and then their members, their partners also sharing it. It was just an amazing experience for me. And so then once the, all the members are sharing it, like you've got each individual member. I think there was one member, James, that didn't, uh, Jadal, that didn't share it. And so it's a matter of trying to push them a bit. So like in a, in a sense, not FOMO because they're not really going to miss out, but in a sense, peer pressure in a way, in that, oh look, all these other members have done it, so who are you gonna be, like which, which person are you gonna be? So that was awesome to see, and then they took it one step further, which was uh, amazing to me. I didn't expect it. They, they actually took their, uh, their main Too Hype channel uh, page, and they actually pushed the promo they actually promoted it themselves as find out which Too, too Hype member you're gonna be, and that was, when when that occurred it was just so amazing to me like I was just so over the moon in that oh my god these guys not only have shared it themselves in their personal accounts but then to take it onto their main account and fully promote it as well was just so amazing to me and I, I just couldn't believe it at the time and uh, I, and I'm sure that's also what's helped push the numbers rather than just their own indi individual accounts even though that they have more followers to be able to push that message from the entire brand perspective 
uh, that was that was huge for me and and uh, amazing to see. So now that we've gone through like the basics of the filter, the distribution, all that sort of side, let's actually talk about what actually happened. Um, for me, I was very closely watching the insights of Spark AR Hub. It took me it took me a good few days to realize that the stats update t every 24 hours at I think it was 9 p.m. for me. Um, I think I found yeah 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. Um, for me, but I was the first day. As soon as it got shared, the first day, I'm sitting there, I'm refreshing my stats all the time. And then all of a sudden, I think I saw it at 11 p.m. that night, and I'm like, holy crap. So let's let's have a quick look at the stats specifically here. So we can see on the left here um, that we've got the, uh, I've just gone through and summarized um, the stats per day here. So we can see day one and day two, no stats. That's because I hadn't shared it. No one had seen it, no one, had, no one had done anything with it. Day three, it was part way through the day. So for me, it was 3 p.m., I believe, that I posted the story. I'd seen Chris had posted 15 minutes before that on his story, so I'm like, okay, this is my time. Posted it, I think like a couple of minutes after I shared the post, he, he had put it out. So there was about six-ish hours of data here. Um, so just to take that in consideration that it's not actually a full 24 hour period that's about six hours worth of data and i couldn't believe it when i saw 118 or pretty much 118,000 on the first six hours we then get to the next day i'm still rapidly clicking the refresh button because i still don't know exactly when the refresh occurs at the same time uh jezza had put it onto tiktok uh he had put his post from instagram story onto tiktok as well and so i'm sitting there because I can watch that one go up um, constantly and I'm like, holy crap, what's happening next? Um, but day, day four, or technically, what, uh, 30 hours after the post went to live, 495,000, basically 500,000 impressions after 30 hours of the filter being actively distributed. I was like, holy crap, that's way higher than I thought it was ever gonna be. Day five, didn't really expect day five to do as well because that by that point like Chris's like the the majority of their posts had disappeared. There was still from the two hype uh, channel uh, from their branded um, Instagram post that was still pushing it, but it still jumped up a lot higher than I thought. I was not expecting another ninety thousand impressions that day. That was crazy to then hit six hundred thousand at day six. That was awesome sort of that was the growth i was expecting on day five because the majority of the posts had started disappearing going away but to still get twenty thousand, that was really cool seventeen thousand nine thousand and then you sort of see it taper off nine days we got six hundred thirty one thousand and then it's gone up by like four thousand three thousand two ish thousand per day and then um, at some point I stopped taking stats about day 14, I believe. So these ones are all, um, calculated from what I'm at today at 672,000 impressions. Um, so if we quickly look at the graph, we can see obviously a, a gigantic spike. So we've got day one, day two, nothing. Then all of a sudden a little, a little rise up and then steep hill upwards and then slowly tapers off and goes much more flat. But that's it. That's the, the impression per day going up pretty crazily. I do have the other stats as well, um, which I could create a second video if anyone's interested. Um, like the actual, um, uh, what are they, the camera, camera shares, and then the actual physical, the actual shares that occur. So I found um, it was really interesting. Like people, although there's lots of impressions and lots of people attempting to use the camera, um, the, the stat for the camera stats going up quite a lot, the actual number of shares is a lot lower. And I guess that's just lots of people trying to randomize it over and over again until they get the person that they want, um, which is really interesting for me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the impressions per day. From an actual, my personal channel perspective, as in my own Instagram, uh, my following and the likes, the increase from this sort of niche um, category where my Instagram's content is quite family oriented, um, I found very minimal increase on my own personal front um, 
from an actual like physical stats perspective. Like I think um, the number of followers that increased of 672,000 impressions is probably a handful, like less than a dozen or around, around a dozen rough roughly <laughs> rough numbers around a dozen so it's it really wasn't a huge increase from a personal brand perspective but it was still so awesome to see and be able to put this together as a this is what i've managed to do um sort of thing so that's it that's that's it from a stats perspective and so that's it guys that's my story of how i took from no statistics at all to actually growing to, well, at the moment, I think it's 672,000 impressions over, well, it's been a couple of weeks now, but the majority were in a three-day span, and it, it was crazy. Uh, if you have any other stories just like this, please comment in the, please comment in uh, down below and tell us your story as well, because I'd love to hear others that have had similar effects in their Instagram and, and how well they've done.